Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson, and welcome to Construction Project Management Tips and Learning. Today, we're going to be looking at the master schedule versus short-term schedules. It's an area that I think there's a lot of misunderstandings that goes on and a lot of things that are done that aren't in the best interest of the project. I'm a professor of construction management and I've taught thousands of professionals over the decades. And I'm here to try to pass on some of those uh, tips that I've learned by working with very, very good project managers with very big companies. So let's get started. Well, first of all, we've got to think of our master schedule. And I've talked about this in other videos. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click subscribe. It helps to support uh, the videos that I do. Uh, and also click notifications so you can see new ones. And if you have been watching, you know I do a lot of training on Microsoft Project. We talk a lot about project management tips and techniques and ways to improve. Well, one of the things that we identify with is what's a critical path schedule. And a critical path, you know, our industry is changing in a lot of ways or attempting to change. It needs to change. Uh, I'm also a lean practitioner, lean construction, which is after basically elimination of waste and adding value to the client and customer and respect for people, a lot of other things. A critical path is more the traditional method of managing projects. And we still use critical path when we use lean construction in that it's a high level schedule and it overarches and sort of establishes where those milestone dates should be on a project. And a milestone is just a point in time and how we get there. It's a motivational tool. Um, it's hard to get motivated and up for a schedule that's, you know, four or five years long on many construction projects. And so it's a, it's a shorter period of time, very often like three months or four months in that sort of zone. It can be shorter too. Um, so we developed this master schedule, which is a high level schedule. And our high level schedule is like this. It basically will go from the beginning of the project to the end of the project. Right now, I'm not showing any sort of link lines, but everything should be connected as part of a network. They're shut off at the moment in this scheduling software. You can turn them off and shut them off. Uh, and the critical path will spell out what's the basically the longest path through the project that'll be allow you to finish the project in the shortest amount of time. And some activities will have float and flexibility. And you're doing this at the beginning. And quite honestly, there's no way you're going to be accurate for how you're going to do everything. But at the same time, if you don't do that and you don't sort of cut your teeth on that, meaning that you really sort of develop what do you have to do on this project? What is the sequencing with what you know now that you'd like to implement the project? Now, historically, we've also made some mistakes, I think, in that we have like one or two people throw together this critical path schedule and then we fly with it. And part of that is our contract process. You know, it's a, a basically it's a design bid build. And so the consultants have put it out. You have a short period of time to put in a bid schedule and that sort of establishes the time period you can finish and complete the project. And you establish some milestones within that or key phase dates. Once you're assigned the project, you really don't have a good excuse to not develop an effective baseline schedule around those milestone and finish dates. Uh, contractually, you may be obligated to hit, you know, finish dates and certain phase dates or turnover dates that may occur during the project. Okay, so we should then baseline the schedule, detail it out much more detail than a bid schedule because we don't, we don't have the project yet, and understandably, we haven't taken the considerable inputs from all the trades that we should. But on a baseline for the major trades and supply chain connections, we should involve them in that development of the baseline schedule. It shouldn't be done by a scheduler and one project manager, maybe one site super. You should get key inputs so that it is more realistic. And that's one of our failings that I've seen. And that's where Lean kind of sort of pokes you know, at CPM schedules, because it's like, well, you didn't really involve the people that are going to be doing the work. 
So how do you know? And you're going to push that schedule on them when they don't think it's realistic and they know more about their specific areas than you. So that's one of our challenges. So I'm going to say that up front. Develop, and we'll talk about this in other videos because it needs a lot of flushing out. Our industry needs a lot of flushing out on this and we need to do a bit of flushing out on that. But at the basic level, we need to have a baseline schedule which has had a number of inputs from key players, higher level, higher level. It's not going to be into the weeds yet, but it should be realistic. At that point, you know, we should be able to understand milestone dates. And so from that, in our industry, we may develop or will develop or should develop or hopefully are using short-term schedules. Now, this can be all over the map too. This could be this could be a three month uh, look ahead schedule. The longer the project, the more likely that's needed. Uh, and you know, in lean, they would call it a phase schedule, a milestone schedule. And then you're looking at anywhere from usually two week look aheads to six week look aheads. And so whatever that may be um, that you're using, those should be flushed out really well. I personally like the four to six week look ahead because it gives you time to um, involve the parties very closely to try to expose possible roadblocks that can prevent you from doing the work. And once they're exposed, you can work at removing them so that when you get up to doing the work, you've got a high propensity that you can be successful. But let's just assume we've got a two week, very often a lot of people use two week schedule, two week look aheads. Two weeks really you require three weeks. So what just happened, right? So that'll be one. What just happened on your project? And then what are you looking at the next two weeks? Now, this should not be developed. So this is what I really want the emphasis of this particular video to be. This should not be developed by the site super on the fly without consideration of what did the master schedule, the current updated master schedule say. Now, I said we develop a baseline and as we update that schedule as we start doing the work, things change. Things don't go the way that we expected. So this needs to be adjusted on an ongoing basis. Usually, formally, it could, again, depends what country you're in, but in Canada, typically there's a formal update to the client once a month. And then there's iterative updates, maybe weekly or bi-weekly within um, on the master schedule. So this is getting updated at a higher level. And this master schedule, because it has a critical path, will show you the impacts, how they ripple through your project. If it's a four year project, how that will change your finish date if nothing else is done. And you wanna see that sort of long-term horizon impacts when you update it. So that's important. When you're developing your look aheads, you should consider what's just been done and what are we supposed to be doing according to the master schedule. So the master schedule, and I've in the previous MS project video shown you how you can filter out what's coming up in the next six weeks in the master schedule and just make sure then that this is that, that act set of activities that's coming up in the next six weeks is filtered out and you're covering that in more detail. This of course will be in more detail. This is coming up, this is closer, right? You have the people, the four persons that are with your trades there. You have your site super, you know some of the issues that are going on and you have the talent set, the knowledge set there on your site to try to improve this, right? And to respond to things that weren't unexpected. There's going to be unknown unknowns, there's gonna be known unknowns that come up and affect you on this. So you need those inputs, but you also need to know where were we supposed to be? That doesn't mean that this can't change if it's gonna be for the better. Like if you're finding boots on the ground, better ways of doing this, then you can make adjustments up here. But those should be reflected. And this should be the starting point for any site super that's developing a schedule. It's not like, oh, what are we gonna do the next two weeks? Let's do this, 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 this. And then later on, see what's going on in the master schedule. They need to be integrated. This shows you long-term impacts. 
This shows you short-term impacts. They're different that way. This, we can get very quick short-term learning. We can really get quick feedback on. That feedback, when fed into the master schedule, will really give us a good understanding of what's going on long-term. And then we can look ahead too, because there may be some things that with a little bit of time, with what we know now, we can make adjustments to, to better position us to be able to hit our target dates. So when short-term schedules are working in concert with long-term schedules, it is very, very helpful from that perspective. And so you need to be always working with the current updated master schedule, and it needs to have been filtered so that the site super knows what's coming up, making sure they're covering that, or if they can't, understanding why. And then it really to integrate between them, feed into each other. So this is filtered. This is then more detailed out with the inputs and agreement of the trades, right? So this is what we're trying to achieve is a much more even flow. We're trying to have a pull system if we're getting into lean terminology, but even if we're not getting into lean terminology, we really want to have a nice even flow. We want to have trades that they buy into the schedule because they were part of the development of the schedule. And this is also going to help us for things like on-site if we have to have more detailed schedules, things like material hoist, things like a crane schedule, things like certain key pieces of equipment perhaps, then we can develop those components off of this and make sure that everything is being optimized for the overall project, not just for an individual trade, not just for the GC, but for the overall project to make sure that it works. And what's happening here, boots on the ground, guess what? needs to feed back into the master schedule when it's updated so we can see the ramifications and the impacts we can compare it and then that's going to help us look at perhaps some longer term uh, adjustments and changes that we can make that's also going to advise us on the short term with the site supers development of the short term look ahead you see pms have a more long looking view lens of the project. Site supers tend to have a shorter lens and they need to work together to be effective. So this is the key points that I wanted to get across today is that they integrate and they basically iterate. We're constantly making these adjustments, but we're doing it with both the short term and the long term in mind. Otherwise, it's kind of chaos, chaotic, it gets more adversarial. Everybody's having turf wars. This is more trying to, even using the CPM system without last planner system can be used effectively if you're incorporating a number of those kind of lean principles, which in traditional successful projects, that does get done because you have site supers and PMs that know that you have to build strong relationships, that know they don't know everything that they got to get the, those inputs and buy-ins and that will lead to stronger commitments. So this is helping you on the smart goal side of things, be specific, create measurable targets, right? Make sure, making sure they're attainable, they're realistic, resource-based and time bound. Um, these are all the elements of integrating successful schedules into a project. There's a lot more on this. A lot more that needs to be discussed and I'll discuss them further in this series. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, tip and uh, learning today, the PM tip and learning. And please click subscribe, notifications, and leave a comment if you have some experiences or questions that you'd like to ask. I'm Tom Stevenson wishing you a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.